You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Spiritual Kung Fu with your host, Akalon Hollingsworth. Trained as a Kung Fu priest, Akalon is here to help you win your inner battles and bring light to the darkness in our world. Akalon shares skills, methods, and insights from the self-mastery system he developed from his Kung Fu priest training out of nearly 30 years of study and experience. So welcome the host of Spiritual Kung Fu, Akalon Hollingsworth. Welcome to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon, founder of Spiritual Kung Fu, and coming to you live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Now, this is the first show since the New Year, so of course, Happy New Year to you. Hope it's a good start for you. I will speak momentarily to this. Uh, New Year's, we tend to have a sense of you know, jubilation, it's a new year, and we get excited for the optimism of all the wonderful things that are going to happen. Hopefully, a lot of wonderful things do happen. I'll share with you that when I woke up uh, on New Year's Day, my heart had a little bit of a, uh, more of a sober sense going into the, the year 2019, that a mission for f- helping other people really deeply love and accept themselves. And that's going to tie into tonight's episode as well. Uh, and and for more people to be safe in the world. And for me to, uh, I have felt the calling to step into the, to helping with this more than I did even in 2018. It's a progressive thing with me. So that's the, the theme that I came in uh, New Year's Day with that I woke up to. And of course, as you know, I use this show towards that end of of helping People master themselves and win their inner victories and also to bring light to the darkness in various ways. Now, for anyone that tuned in last week, we had a technical glitch, I apologize for. Uh, A different show aired last week, and it was a holiday week, so it was going to be a replay of the episode with my Kung Fu Priest training, but it was a different episode altogether. So I apologize if anyone listened and there was some confusion on that. We're back on track now going forward. And I know that the last live episode I, I, I did, I told you that the next episode we'd get into uh, a, a part of self-mastery referring to body care with spiritual kung fu. And I'm actually going to be doing that next week because I have a special guest for you tonight. And I'm very excited. I'll tell you about more about her in just a moment. Uh, as far as uh, spiritual kung fu self-mastery, Self-acceptance, deep self-acceptance is a big part of self-mastery. It's, it's one of the, the ways you know that you have been mastering yourself or you're in mastery is that you have that acceptance. But it's also, it's also a result that you, you can go for um, and, and enjoy. Now, part of self-acceptance is you have different parts of yourselves. Acceptance of your body we'll get into next week. But acceptance of your your spiritual gifts is is part of self-mastery. Now, some of us have what is referred to as a sudden spiritual emergence, where all of a sudden, all at once, there's this influx of of insights, of messages, and, and spiritual gifts coming in. And it can be confusing. It can be scary. And it can also, sadly, be misunderstood as someone's having a mental breakdown or they're going crazy, when really what's happening is it's a breakthrough. And it's really important to discern that accurately. Now, in support of 
being able to go through a spiritual a sudden emergence um, with some clarity, with some understanding, and with some tools, I brought in a, a guest speaker who can speak from her experience on this. Uh, it's a fellow spiritual teacher, spiritual warrior. I'm uh, very excited to introduce to you Shannon Sundral. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Good evening. I'm so excited to be here. Now, you have a story to tell, and I would love for you to tell it. So can we start with, you said 10 years ago, you had this, this sudden emergence. Yes. Can you share with the audience what that experience was and, and, and kind of the struggle you had with it in the beginning? Absolutely. And and I will say, first and foremost, that I didn't know at the time that it was a spiritual emergence happening. So um, leading up to this was you know, a pretty stressful six months of my life to look back, um, just in a career that I wasn't fulfilled in, had been in an unhealthy relationship, some of that going on. And so um, there was a lot of stress coming through my body. I know that for sure. And the other, you know, explanation of why this happened so suddenly, I, I really don't have that. But um, what I was experiencing was you know, a lot of energy coming through my body for about three or four months prior. And I can look back and see that now, not really knowing at the time exactly what was happening, but now understanding that there was a lot of Kundalini energy coming through my field. And it felt intense at the time. And right? it was really intense. It was a lot of intense energy. And so I was only sleeping three or four hours a night. I was constantly moving. I was working. I was running. I was on the go, all of that. Cause I didn't know what to do with all that energy that was coming through me um, and had no idea that there was anything even called Kundalini energy or that that was a real experience sure. of that coming through. Um, that would be confusing if you have no reference point. Even that, I didn't know what to do with all that energy, right? And so so it was channeled in probably some unhealthy ways. <laughs> I don't even want to say probably, it was. But at the time I was 28 and just, it felt like I was, you know, just living life, yeah, right? Sure. Um, and so... In, in September then of 2008, I um, decided to stop drinking alcohol and, you know, get off any recreational drugs that I was doing, all of that, right? And so my body was coping through those mechanisms, right? And so when I removed all that, then... Before you go on, mm -hmm. just that, I want to speak to that for a moment. Yeah. So... It, as far as the different coping mechanisms that mm -hmm. aren't necessarily the best for us. Right. It's understandable, though, that we would, if for, for not knowing what else to do, Absolutely. fall on the things in society that we, we know, okay, we have access to this that will help numb this, or this that will distract me from it, or this that will help me escape from whatever this crazy feeling is that I don't know what it is. Yeah, and it was a way for me to bring stuff. the energy down a notch or two. Okay, sure. Right? By drinking alcohol, smoking a little pot, yeah. all of that. It right. brought me down a notch or two. Okay. And so then I was more on the even even playing field of everyone around me. Because otherwise, I just felt so, I mean, I guess you would say, like I was saying earlier, manic almost. Was, was part of that trying to have a sense of being normal? Right. Okay. Kind of exactly. normalizing yourself. Right. And try not to like concern the people around me, but knowing what I was feeling. And it was, it was so much life force coming through though. And so for me, mm -hmm. it felt really good. I just didn't know how to channel it appropriately sure, or in a healthy way, yeah. maybe. So, so, so in September, when I removed all those coping mechanisms, then, um, I, I, um, yeah, I just remember kind of being like, start questioning things like how the world is working and what I'm doing here and my career and like all that stuff started happening. And then what seemed like out of the blue, like almost overnight, all this communication started coming in and I started hearing voices, many, many voices. So first, first it was a wave of energy and then more was coming in. We're about yes. to have a, 
go to commercial and Perfect. hear more about that next day. So it was intense energy and then a lot more started coming in. So we'll hear more about that in just a moment after this brief break. This is Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm Akalon, your host, founder of Spiritual Kung Fu, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Keep listening. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Col des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon, founder of Spiritual Kung Fu, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we're continuing now with... Uh, the guest I'm so excited about, Shannon Sundral, and she's going to tell us more about what came in after that that wave of energy that she adjusted to, and then there was more coming in. Yeah, and I will add that, you know, the communication coming in, it wasn't love and light. It was very fear-based. Mm. It was um, just things that I couldn't comprehend to make, you know, I was trying to figure it all out in the physical world sense, in the fifth dimensional sense, the three D world, right? Right. And and the yet points you had to work with. That to I had to work with. Yeah. Like how how would all this information, all this stuff about myself be coming in? How would they know this and who was it communicating? So I was trying to think that it was coming through the radio or coming through the GPS in my car, like all these different ways of trying to make sense of it in the physical world. Right. And so that in itself was so confusing. Um and then just not feeling safe at all in the world because everything looked very dark to me. Yeah. Um, the other stuff that I was seeing was dark, um, all of that. And so just feeling like I wasn't safe anywhere, that people were stalking me, all of that stuff. And it was a very real experience that I was having. And like I said, at the time, I had no idea that I had essentially opened up these clairvoyant gifts and opened up to another dimension, essentially, and seeing that and hearing that. And with no reference points to go off of, how did you end up making sense of that? Or what, what well, happened next? Yeah. And so, um, you know, my um, brother ended up picking me up and taking me to the ER. It was kind of the unfolding of a lot of panic, a lot of fear, um, trying to find somewhere that I felt safe. And I, I just wasn't finding that place. And I was in communication with, I think, my mom at the time. And, and she said, you, you know, we're just like, obviously, they were really concerned about me. And so he ended up coming and getting me um, from work because I had made it to work. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole time there's like this panic. There's this panic attack unfolding, all of, you know, all sure. of those things. And so. Um, and so he got me and brought me to the ER. But the whole time I'm laying in the back of his truck with my hands over my head, just like not feeling safe and so f feeling safe from what was happening with the messages coming in or what the messages with, were telling you or well both? what they were telling me and with what I was seeing okay yeah yeah and I remember too like 
walking into the ER with him and this person coming really, really close to me saying, you don't belong here. You don't belong here. And now knowing that actually wasn't a person in the physical world, but at the time I had no idea. So it's all, you know, having these experiences and not being able to make sense of it at all. So there was a message coming in at the time that, right. This isn't the solution. You're, 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 this doesn't match to the experience you're having. It's not the problem. Well, and what I also see is that it was like, you don't belong in this dimension. Okay in this non-physical realm okay. that had opened up, if that makes sense. F- face value, I can... Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so the unfolding of it was that ended up, you know, taking a week off work, sleeping pills that shut down the communication, the medication mm-hmm. shut down all of it. And then when I got off the sleeping pills, it reopened a few weeks later. Um, and then after four days of that intense communication again, experiencing all of that stuff, not knowing how to make sense of it, going into more and more and more panic, um, I ended up in the hospital for the second time or in the ER for the second time. And then the first time in the ER, what did they, what was their feedback? Their the feedback was happened? like, um, from what I remember anyway, was that I needed time off work. I needed to sleep and that they felt like what I was telling them was true, that you know, maybe there was someone stalking me or that I was having these, Mm -hmm. you know, that it was a very real experience that I was having. So, so. And then the second time, what happened? Um, so the second time, just telling them a little bit more about what I was experiencing and just, you know, being in way more of a panic for sure at that point. And, um, them just understanding that like hearing voice, you know, just like some of the stuff that I was saying was very, um, in alignment with psychosis okay. for sure. And so that was like the admittance into the hospital and then wanting to sift through what this was and to rule out things like bipolar and schizophrenic and all of those things. Right. So, and that was, and then, you know, um, being on medication and needing to regulate the doses and all of that over the course of the next 10 days. So I'm going to speak to something from my Kung Fu priest training mm-hmm. with Spiritual listening being part of my Kung Fu priest training, what I was, well, my teacher worked with me on that was, there was a lot, a, big, a lot of emphasis on discernment of what voice am I hearing? Mm-hmm. Is this coming from the sickness? Is, is this coming from cultural dysfunction? Is this coming from higher power? A lot mm-hmm. of different verbiage we can use for that. And to orient towards that, that, supportive, positive from something greater than us. Uh, we, he would often say that, which is greater than us, but uh, God is another name, of course. Uh, and, and discerning. So, But we can have delusions and we can have insights mm-hmm. and it can be really tricky to discern between the two, especially if you have insights that people are saying are delusional when mm-hmm. they're not. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to interject that that piece of inner discernment for for, and it takes practice, a lot of awareness practice of paying a deep attention to what's coming in or what we're mm-hmm. picking up on, and then where it's coming from. A lot of self honesty too. Oh, that, is that coming from something I experienced in childhood where I I, I developed this thought mm-hmm. pattern around it, or is that something new? Or yeah. mm-hmm. so I. I've interjected now. Please continue. Well, and I think, too, you know, when I started searching for answers and really trying to figure out what this was, because I knew it was a lot more than what the doctors were telling me. Sure. Right. It wasn't adding up what they were telling me. And um, and especially once I got off the medication, then six months later. Right. And my connection reopened in a different way. Um when I, when I started searching for answers and discovering some of the stuff that other people had written and experienced, you know, and them talking about all the other dimensions that exist in the non-physical and how as above so below that Mm -hmm. there's also darkness in the non-physical right and spiritual warfare happening and I will say that you know before I ended up in the hospital I definitely felt like dark was surrounding me that it was taking me over big time Mm -hmm. right and there was a point when I I don't remember the first three days of being in the hospital and there was a point when I came out of that that I was so strong and I knew I can look back now and see that I was then encapsulated 
by the light, whether you call that God or the divine or the angels. But like within that three days, there was a, a rescue team that came in for sure. So I started, I introduced this topic tonight talking about self mastery and, re, and as far as self acceptance mm-hmm. and then with spiritual gifts and the suddenness when they come on suddenly to some of us. But obviously this is tying into bringing light to the darkness as well. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk more about that when we come back from this break. This is Akalon and Spiritual Kung Fu coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. This is Akalon. I'm your host and founder of Spiritual Kung Fu, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And still here with Shannon Sundral. And I'm going to, the reason I brought her in and that I'm not speaking directly to this subject myself is that I did not have a sudden emergence. So I had training over many years and an application in all of my life circumstances over decades, um, accumulating to my level of what I'm working with now. And I didn't have, so I didn't have the suddenness and I've been wanting to. Uh, I've been to bring that piece in somewhere along the way here because I'm, I figure there are people in the audience that have had or in the future will have mm-hmm. the, the suddenness come to them where they have to all of a sudden figure a bunch of stuff out and they don't get the gradual that, that I got. So that's why I, I brought Shannon in to speak to from her experience with the suddenness. And now back to what we left off with pretty gripping, <laughs> shrouded in darkness and then and then light coming in to help you. And. Jacqueline, I do want to say something too. I definitely feel and will still acknowledge that ending up in the hospital and ending up on medications definitely did save my life because the communication coming in, the not sleeping, all of that was so intense and was so tormenting that something needed to stop that. That makes sense. And so, so that, that piece of it, I will always acknowledge that it saved my life. Okay. Okay. What did not serve me well was the six months of continued high doses, dosage of medication because being someone who's highly sensitive, that just completely shut me down. And so it was a six month period of, um, deep depression then after that. Okay. Um, yeah. So So just to make note. That's important. I, thanks mm-hmm. for sharing mm-hmm. that. Uh, and so there was a, a benefit on the, in the short term. In the short term, that was yeah. Needed. Yeah. And then ongoing could have been a little better and different. So you, tell, so you felt like the darkness was overtaking you, and then there was light that came in to help you. Uh, finish telling us about that. Yeah. And now, you know, at the time I had 
couldn't make sense of it still. It's only mm-hmm. looking back okay. that I can see that this is what was happening. And through hypnosis, I've done some hypnosis sessions to pull information out from some of the stuff that I have blocked. Okay. Because some of this experience has been blocked from my memory. And so I'm pulling that information out to get that detailed out to people. Um, but when I when I remember coming through then and like remembering being in the hospital and waking up and wondering where I was, essentially, mm-hmm. I went up to the front desk and asked to be released because I was I knew that I wasn't supposed to be there. Sure. Right. And then they had put me on like a 48 hour hold. And so I wasn't able to get out. But that was kind of I just had that strength back within me at that time. And then understanding that, well, if I was ever going to get out of this place, I needed to kind of start going through the motions and start telling the doctors what they wanted to hear. So and that's yeah, was the next kind of 10 days. And then to fit in the with the established system. To fit, yeah, system. and to get, yeah, and to, yeah, be and out then, of the hospital eventually. Yeah, and then once you were out, mm-hmm. tell us of the next stage. You mentioned six months of deep depression. Um, yeah, so it was the medication. It was right. too heavy for me. Um, and, you know, a lot of weight gain in that time. A lot of just, like, feeling like I wanted to just play really small. For sure. So I was just going through the motions, work, sleep, eat, work, don't sleep, eat, attention, don't think. attract attention, hide, hide, hide. So that everyone and put on a happy face. So everyone thinks you're doing OK. Right. right? But that was the probably even more so <laughs> a dark, scary time for me because there was no feeling. I had no feeling. There was no will to really live. Mm-hmm. Right. I just I kept going through the motions, kept showing up. And then um, a chiropractor that I was going to at the time pulled me aside one day and acknowledged that I was losing all my life force. And, and was I ready to get off the medications? And if I was, he was going to be the one to help me. And that was my first step out of the medical system. Okay. So then you tapered off of the drug. Yeah. Within three weeks though, everything was gone. And that was with his help, exercise, nutrition, and chiropractic work. So, so then once you're kind of back to yourself and what then was it a, a sudden flood again of so, stuff? Or yeah. Was- so within like after, so three weeks to get off the medications, about a month later, my intuition started coming in so strong. Okay. And so now that was the connection coming in that way. So it was no longer hearing the voices or seeing things, right? It was mm-hmm. just this really strong overall knowing intuition okay. that I could not deny. And I remember feeling it so strongly. And the first thing was, you know, taking a... Um, different path and going to massage therapy school, which was my first step into the healing arts, okay. which was a huge turning point from my dental hygiene career that I was in at the time. Sure. So then you had a direction and something yeah. to put yourself into. Right. And I couldn't forward. explain it. I just knew that that was the path that I needed to go. So, and within that path was my own inner healing and starting to acknowledge my gifts and abilities as a healer here. And so that was an amazing turning point for sure. See, just having heard the story you just told of your experience and then getting to that part, I just, mm-hmm. I feel a sense of relief just listening. Like, <laughs> oh, good. It's a break in the story. Okay. That's so it's more enjoyable after all of that tumult. Well, yeah, but we have to, I mean, we have to acknowledge how dark that was, how scary that was, how exactly. heavy that was. You know, we don't get to the point that we're at now by not walking through. That's exactly right. And that's with spiritual Kung Fu's emphasis on bringing light to the darkness. Mm -hmm. We do it with acknowledging the darkness that we don't go into denial about it. We don't live in that space, but we don't pretend it's not there. You know, I've told my students over the years, we end our training, our our physical training sessions with what's beautiful in your world so that we're we're mainly focusing on what we're living in, uh, which is wholeness and and self-healing, et cetera, positive things, light. But that we're aware of the darkness also. We don't pretend it's not there. That is really key. Mm -hmm. We can't help anything be better. We can't bring light to the darkness if it's not there. Right. And not to live in the past, but we are meant to share our stories with others. So I'm still reflecting back to pull information and to pull details to get this out to the general public so that other people who have had these experiences or similar can hear someone else's detailed story of what that was. I need to correct 
I just a grammatical thing. I just said you can't bring light to the darkness if if the darkness isn't there. I would love for that to just clarify. <laughs> I would love that to be the case. My teacher training me in this stuff, how to fight the darkness and bring light to the darkness. He was he always said I I just wanted to love people. That's what I wanted to do. But there's this other stuff that we have to address and deal with. Okay. Coming up on a quick commercial break, we'll be back with a lot more. Stay tuned. This is Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon, with special guest today, Shannon Sunrall, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and, and tune in radio. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon, founder of Spiritual Kung Fu, with special guest Shannon Sundrell this evening, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Now, as you can imagine, when you go through an as someone that goes through an experience like this in our general culture, and I, I know I say that, and there are listeners that are perhaps in other countries, and maybe you, your culture does a better job of our general culture in America with this. But uh, just think of how our general medical system cares for or doesn't uh, someone coming through this experience. Um, Supported, not supported. Uh, I'm gonna have. We we speak more to that of of what. So, you you have this emergence, and what was that emergence for you? What's your sense of well, what that actually first was? First, I want to say that I didn't know. My family didn't know, and the doctors definitely didn't know that this was anything spiritual. Okay. Right when I heard the term psychosis, that was my truth. Mm-hmm. Until years later. Okay. When I found my first spiritual teacher and I told her what I had experienced and she wrapped my arms around me and said, honey, you're one of us. Hmm. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That was years later, though. So, um, so I, I do believe that, you know, other cultures, when they have the when they people are experiencing these things and they're asking questions about what they're experiencing is a big part of it. Asking questions. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? That type of thing. They understand that it's the birthing of a healer, not a mental health crisis, mm-hmm. the birthing of a healer. And they do initiation ceremonies, the Mayan culture, the Native Americans. Right. Mm-hmm. Um In India, like all of those places are recognizing this as the birthing of a healer and those gifts coming through and they're able to hold space for that process rather than shutting down the process, which is exactly what medication does. It shuts down the process, delays the process. Mm -hmm. The process will still happen, I believe, but the medication is a barrier. And then once you got beyond that barrier and Mm -hmm. you found 
some support and some guidance, the, the chiropractor, spiritual teacher. Yes. Uh, then you got on a track of, you, you, were you able to integrate? Absolutely. And so I believe that, you know, I'm believe in earth angels for sure. And there was many of them crossing my path to hold my hand for a while and to take me through different phases of, you know, a healing journey. I had a lot of inner healing work to do. Um, and, and also understanding my gifts and embracing those instead of just trying to fit into the society as a normal person saying, those are the gifts that this world needs. We need to help cultivate them for you, you know, and really empower you to embrace those gifts and get them out into the world. And that was what the spiritual teachers did for me along the way. That sounds to me like a, a shift from mm -hmm. trying to fit in to shifting to contribution. Right. But this, I mean, you know, this is over the course of six and seven years, Sure. right? Where the first four of it, I'm still claiming psychosis. Mm -hmm. I'm still laying awake at night saying, you're never going to be hired again. You're unlovable. You're unworthy. If anybody finds out this story, oh my gosh, like you're really not going to live a very functional life if anyone knows about this story. You know, all the things that we tell ourselves because of at the time it was 2008, right? So at the time we were still seeing mental illness, mental health as like we were looking at people and just saying, I'm so glad it's not me, right? And just kind of shunning them still in many ways, right? And, um, you know, and even I still had, you know, comments coming in from friends and families and I would, and people in my family and I would overhear things that were very hurtful, very, very hurtful to me about what they were saying about mental health and mental illness. So, and that's just, you know, society in general, especially at that time, we have more awareness now. I think we have more compassion now. So it sounds like you had with, with your own relationship with yourself, you talked about the different things you'd lie awake thinking about yourself. Mm -hmm. Sounds like your focus is on what's wrong with you and why you're not okay. And then that pretty much shaped your experience. Yeah. Which, and to make sure to hide that story. Never let anybody know about that story, right? Right. Except that story now is like how all this other work came about. That story is like my biggest blessing in my life because of everything that unfolded after that. And you, you've mentioned to me you wanting to share your story to help other people that have an emergence have an easier time of it or a better time of it. Yeah, I think a lot of people out there are being misdiagnosed, right? Or claim, you know, having this psychosis episode when there is a whole different spiritual perspective of things happening and going on. Mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, there's a lot of healers that are having those experiences and not able to understand it and fully embrace their gifts and get, you know, shut down through the medications for way too long. So can you tell us more of you being able to do that for yourself, the, the integrating in the, ex you mm -hmm. shift into acceptance of yourself and your gifts and then being able to work with them. Yeah. So I, I left Minnesota and went back to Denver, Colorado, where I knew I had lived there before and I just knew there was a lot of healers out there. I knew they were all about mind, body, spirit. I knew I could get the support that I needed out there and I wasn't finding it here in Minnesota at that time. Okay. And so my intuition again told me to go back to Denver. And so I did found, you know, the mind, body, spirit expos, my first spiritual teacher there, Sunny Don Johnston, who then started talking about being empathic and highly sensitive and all of those things. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's like music to my ears. Right. And then when I opened up to her about what I had experienced and her acknowledgement of, but you're one of us, you have these gifts. That's what that was. And just like that was a huge turning point then and then I started researching and kind of looking into all of that um and then to working with her for a while and then on my own to taking you know a few different trainings like Reiki cranial sacral stuff like that um just to kind of hone into the gifts more and allow more of them to come out but then really once I got my started getting my hands on clients that's when more of the gifts just became so much stronger. And I was getting more information and messages coming in for my clients and different ways that would help my clients heal mm -hmm. all of those things. And so then it was really just about having that really strong connection to what I say, you know, is the spiritual realm and allowing that as long as I was keeping that strong, I was able to do hands on healing work with others.
So what does that look like for you now? Um, so, so now it's, um, to get out and teach the stuff that I've learned along the way for sure. And so I'm doing, you know, some training with other healers. I've developed some online programs to help guide people who are in a spiritual awakening or have these gifts, high sensitivity. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's to keep things unfolding for sure. Never really know where it's headed. Okay, we got keep listening. We have more after this this brief break. This is Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon, founder of Spiritual Kung Fu, a special guest, Shannon Sundral. And we're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon, with special guest Shannon Sundral. And before Shannon's going to get more into this in a moment from her perspective, I want to speak to spiritual awakening in general, you know, spiritual Kung Fu uh, and self mastery and bring light to darkness. It is a spiritual thing, but of course, I mean, really being alive is a spiritual thing. I don't really <laughs> have to, we don't have to separate everything out. This is spiritual. This is not spiritual. We're all having a spiritual experience uh, by being alive. Life is spiritual, but we have, awakenings of understandings. We're born into systems. We're born into societies that teach us this is what reality is. This is how we are. This is just what what life and reality is. And it's not always accurate. And we generally grow up and outgrow them. And when we have a spiritual awakening, and a lot of us it's over time, uh, and some of us it's sudden, but either way, we grow into more. It's it's our our souls kind of come into their their sense of purpose in the world, uh, and it's not always. Uh, I mentioned sp- spiritual purpose in, in my first episode. It's not always a grandiose thing. From a spiritual kung fu standpoint, it's just the, your quality of being contributing health to our our shared reality of, of, of in culture. Um, but with our spiritual awakenings. It's important that you're kind to yourself about them and that you explore them. You you bring in that part, of it, bring them in as part of your self-acceptance, that you include that and your self-acceptance and your self-mastery. And Shannon, can you speak more on that? Yes. So, um, you know, finding the spiritual teachers and people who would help me along the way was such a turning point in my journey because it really started 
um, cultivating that self love within myself that had hadn't been there or had been lost along the way for sure. Mm -hmm. And so um, being in spiritual community and hearing this truth that sounded like truth to me be spoken that I had never heard before in my life and feeling feeling just really lifted up every time I was in this spiritual community out in Denver and um, being surrounded by people who had had similar experiences, like-minded people who had cultivated deep faith within themselves and deep inner peace. And just knowing that um, that was going to be a huge part of my healing process. And so really diving deep into things like meditation and, and working with other healers and um, that inner healing journey and process was such a huge part and and prayer was a huge part of it. And so really leaning into and cultivating deep faith um, really allowed me to start healing and accepting all these different aspects of my journey. Right. And that different aspects of myself, too. And um, and that was cultivated over time. That did not happen overnight. None of this is instant, right? It's, it's this unfolding journey. Um, but, but that changed, you know, a lot of things in my life, including the work that I would end up doing because I wasn't fulfilled in my career. And I knew that I was here, um, to be out in the world sharing and, and helping others, right. And contributing to humanity. And so, and stepping into that was such a huge, um, lift in my life force and vibration and all of it. So, and I, you know, just knowing that, um, at any time we can choose a different path and go into that spiritual awakening process rather than resisting it. And you're probably picking up that we're encouraging you not to resist it if it's happening for you and that you embrace it. And, and think of it in the terms of it happening for you can be helpful as well, rather than to you. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, looking back on what was the darkest time of my life to date, right, is the biggest blessing, though, because it allowed all of this other stuff to unfold and took me on a completely different path in this lifetime and a path that was in alignment with what I was here to do, in alignment with my heart and soul, in alignment with being of service out in the world, right? And before the sudden spiritual emergence that you experienced, you weren't anywhere near this stuff, were you? You weren't thinking oh, no. of it? You there weren't was... looking for it? No, and I had, you know, as a child, I loved going to Bible camp and, and Sunday school and all of that stuff. And I would pray at night, and that always felt so good to me. Like there was some connection there that I just loved. But definitely in my 20s, all of that had kind of fallen away. So, so then it was, I wonder, maybe that's part of where, why the suddenness happened. Right. Yeah. I mean, and I can look back and see, um, messages that were coming in that were guiding me out of my career and definitely out of the office that I was working at that time, but I wasn't listening. I wasn't paying attention. I was, I had such this, um, closed off reality of what I was capable here of in this lifetime. Right. And I had went to college to be a dental hygienist. And so I just clung on to that, even though it was not serving me well, I kept clinging and clinging and clinging, not knowing. And so, yeah, that, that experience led me to a completely different spiritual journey then, and really discovering my Dharma, my soul mission here. So after the sudden phase you, you went into the longer arcing journey right and yes you went from uh not not accepting yourself and being depressed to shifting into acceptance now along the ways where did you did you encounter was it a steady progression of better and better and better or did you hit any Oh, Set absolutely back. not. It was like <laughs> one step forward, two steps back, right? Because I had this old lifestyle and these old habits and this old patterning, right? That still was still was in me. And so, so even though I was doing all this healing work and spending so much time and energy and money working with like naturopath doctors and all of that, I was still, you know, um, tapped into old belief systems and old ways of thinking. And so all of that needed to be rewired as well over time, as we know. And so I look back at my healing journey, knowing it was a six year journey for sure until I came out the other side 
And that was six years of a lot of dedication. Yes, there was days and weeks where I would get pulled out off of that, but it was still a lot of time and dedication to that in order to go deep into that healing so that I could get to the place that I felt like I was meant to get, which was to be out in the world and teaching what I had learned along the way, for sure. Because it wasn't just good that, okay, I was now on a different path or I was feeling better or I was uplifted or living at high vibration. I also wanted other people to know what I had found helpful. Good. And more people know now that you're sharing on this show. And there's more with this when we come back. We're going to wrap up after this brief break. Uh, Stay tuned for more spiritual kung fu. Akalon Hollingsworth coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio with special guest Shannon Sunrell. Keep listening. French Rastafarian baker Chef Ugmat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon. Coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Again, here with special guest Shannon Sundral. And we, she's been sharing about her experience with a sudden spiritual emergence and the journey of integrating her awakening over years of time afterwards and going from n- not ex- accepting herself and thinking something's wrong with her to embracing her gifts and going into self acceptance. Now, it, Self-acceptance is a huge challenge for probably all of us for varying reasons. Um, but people with this, those of us with this uh, integrating our spiritual gifts or understandings or awakenings, it's an added challenge to the regular stuff that we're, we're dealing with as a just a people, as a, a human race. Um, and I hope this show helps those of you listening that maybe feel alone and would like uh, some a, a touchstone for support uh, in the realm of spiritual tools and strengths and such. Um, but Shannon, you have a, a focus you'd like to speak to, and then maybe people can actually connect with you for support as well. Yes, absolutely. So definitely guiding people through, you know, a spiritual awakening is part of my mission here for sure. Um And just knowing that they're not alone in that and that it's not an easy journey. It's difficult and challenging for sure. Um, And that we do, you know, over time cultivate that warrior energy within ourselves to keep going and to keep doing what we're here to do. Um, And the other thing is that I work with a lot of women who also have a stir within a calling that they're feeling and, and they, sometimes they don't know what that is. 
But when they do know what that is, a lot of times they just don't know how to step into that, step into that calling. How how do they maybe leave the system that they're in, right, or the eight to five, and really start cultivating this other thing, this this calling, this mission that they have that they feel so strongly about that just causes them to stir, you know? And so I really help guide people, too, into um, what does that look like? What does that process and journey look like in order to develop that work and get that work out into the world? Because everybody has a dharma here. And what that says is that we all are here with a soul mission and that there's a certain group of people out in the world who need what our soul mission is, that work that we have to offer, that knowledge, that wisdom, that voice, there's a certain group of people who will benefit from hearing that, right? And so that's why it's important for all of us to be connected to our calling, our mission, our dharma, and get that out into the world. And you and I both help with that. Yes. Now, if, if people want to reach out to you and get support from you, how can they do that? Do they email you or how can they? Um, the best way is my website. So it's shannonsandrel.com. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm on those on a regular basis. Will you spell that out for people? Yep. So it's S-H-A-N-N-O-N-S-O-N-D-R-O-L. And also when the replay posts, you'll be able to see that uh, in the title of the replay, her name. So if you forget, you can go back and hear it again. And then, of course, if you want to contact me and reach out for spiritual kung fu training and and, and my support, you can reach me at Akalon at innervictorypower.com. Hackalon is A-C-C-O-L-O-N at innervictorypower.com. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this show. Uh, I Again, I was really glad to be able to speak to this specific aspect of self-mastery um, and also bringing light to the darkness. Now, going forward, next week, I'll be speaking about spiritual kung fu and self-mastery in regards to body care. And this time of year, that's super hyped up, body care and body image. And some of it is healthy, but a lot of it is not. So tune in next week for the healthy of that, and we'll uh, get you spiritual kung fu support for your body uh, relationship and care for your body and getting your body to be a, a, an enjoyable experience for you. Um, so that'll be next week. And... In the meantime, I want you to continue checking in with yourself going into this year about what this theme, beyond the hype of jubilation for a new year, feel into what is your purpose for this year. Thank you for listening. This is Spiritual Kung Fu, and I've been Akalon, a founder of Spiritual Kung Fu, coming to you live from the VBM Global Network with special guest Shannon Sundral. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to Spiritual Kung Fu with Akalon Hollingsworth. Listen each week for a deep health, soul strengthening, and transcendent transformation, and learn the skills for defending your well being and becoming a master right here on Spiritual Kung Fu. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.